Fuji just announced the new X100V. Because Sammy's is our new sponsor here at the Slam Lens, we have the opportunity to get this camera into our hands immediately today. That's going to be great for us here at the Slam Lens because we can get cameras quicker from Sammy's. Helps you get the information as fast as you want it and helps us get the cameras that you want us to review. I used to have an old model of this camera and I love that thing, but this thing is even, it's way better than it used to be. It has a 26 megapixel sensor, which is awesome. It has a better processor, of course, better autofocus. Supposedly it can focus down to negative five stops. It's got a flip out screen. It has a flip out before. screen, which is really great for people like me that need to shoot toddlers. <laughs> um, and then it can, has optional weather sealing now. You can get an attachment that goes around the lens and it's weather sealed, which is really cool if you want to travel with it, which I think is one of the best uses for the camera. It also includes 4K video, which is a great upgrade. Yes, big upgrade there. So let's get over to Pasadena. Let's get that camera into our hands. Thank you to Sammy's. Let's make this happen. Let's do it. Hi, this is JP Morgan. And this is Kenneth Merrill. And we've got with us here Sarah today. So Sarah's gonna help us look at the new Fuji X100V. So <laughs> tell me why you love this camera. Uh, I love this camera because it's super lightweight, super travel friendly. I mean, it does have a fixed lens. I just love the fact that it's a, it's a very affordable, as cameras go, uh, walk around, point and shoot kind of street camera. Yeah. So Sarah, when you're traveling next and you're going off to whatever country you're going to next, would you choose this camera to take with you? Yeah, I definitely would. It's nice and sleek looking. Nice accessory. <laughs> yeah, nice accessory. There you go. So with that thought, let's get to our picture quality test. We'll look at, I want to look at the different baked in film simulations in this camera. I think yeah. that'll just be fun to see the same image with all of those and see how those look. Yeah. I think that's a fun thing to look at and we'll do some autofocus tests, picture quality tests, dynamic range. We'll go through the whole works. Let's just start first with our picture quality test. So looking at the picture quality test, I I mean, it's pretty sharp. Look at the color. The color is, is pretty. It's, I mean, the skin is nice. The roll off is nice. I feel like the there's not a lot of separation just in terms of like the her skin and the brick and it, none of the color from the skin or the background really pops. The only color that pops is her shirt. Feels a little muted. Yeah, not not real strong, not real bold about how they're rendering the color. The highlights are like super harsh on her shoulders and the shadows are pretty deep. So I'm very curious to see how the dynamic range pans out. Yeah. Okay, so let's take a look at the dynamic range. First off, this is so consistent with just about every digital camera that we look at. Mm -hmm. And that is a normal exposure is not the best exposure. Yeah. A minus one stop, at least, or two thirds of a stop, you get a much better rendition of the highlights and of the shadows. Mm -hmm. And if you do it at just straight up what your meter, well, what our meter said on her right. face, right. it's just a little too over. It's just under a little bit is much nicer. Uh, well, look at this, you go to one, if you go from that to one stop, now, I think this is down just a little bit when I look at it. It's just a little down yeah, overall. You, I probably should have brought the shadows up brought a little more. Just a yeah. little bit, or just the overall exposure up a little yeah. bit. Look at the building, though, on the side. I mean, there's your normal, and you you gain a lot more detail in those highlights when you underexpose oh, yeah. it. And oh, you yeah. still hold a the light color. on your face. Yep. Yeah, I mean, there's no, as far as I can see, no hit on the image quality at no. all. No. So. so here's minus uh, two. Everything's yeah. holding extremely well. Minus three stops. Starting yeah, to see I'm some digital see noise. Yep, yeah, yep. Definitely. Yeah, it starts to see the skin starts to be a little patchy at minus mm -hmm. three. When you go to minus four, you definitely have some problems. The color is holding pretty well it through is. all of these. That is, it is very nice. Yeah, I mean, you look you at the color you take, chart, the data. You the take a checker. Sony, a Sony A7 III, and it'll have more color shifts than that. So let's look at what happens when we overexpose it. So there's overexposed by a stop. Yeah, of course those highlights are just gone. They're completely gone. Yeah. Yeah, and from there it just gets worse. Yeah. The highlights get worse. Now her face has started to shift color at minus uh, two, mm -hmm. or at plus two. Then at plus three, her face is yellow, and we get those yeah, patchy yeah, whites, right. and the background blows out. So that, I mean, it's not. It's doing pretty well underexposed. Her face and like the brick and everything. It just seems all kind of the same color almost, you know, <laughs> muted and her, it's her, the skin definitely goes a little magenta with this camera. I feel like the camera's pushing a lot of the colors in the scene towards one main color, like, well, here's blue and here's pink and here's, Oh yeah, you know, you're not getting a lot of gradation. You're a lot not of color getting gradation. that separation yeah. in between, even if the colors do feel strong when they're there. I mean, overall it handles the contrast to a certain extent, but certainly underexposed it is a better place to be. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, let's look at the ISO. You go from 400, looks pretty darn good. And if we look at 800 in comparison. Looks 
also pretty darn good. Yeah. Are we seeing it in the shadows at all? Well, go to the, the little wrinkles by our left eye. You do see a tiny bit there. Yeah, I suppose you're right. So if we go from 800 to 1600, yeah, I feel definitely like I'm start definitely, definitely there. starting to see it yeah, there. Definitely seeing it there. You're seeing it at 800. You do. It's. I mean, it's 16 feels like you. It's a little more obvious. So we go 16 to 32. Yeah. Yeah. 32 yeah. is pretty strong. It's definitely there. I feel like the 1600. I could probably still print. You know, an 8 by 10 or something like that. Oh yeah, I think. You could. Uh, 32 maybe not. Yeah, maybe not so much. But 32 to 64. Yeah, 64 yeah. is pretty bad. Yeah, it's pretty grainy. Pretty grainy. Of course, when we go to 12,800. Look at that color, though. Color, you know, the color Fuji did not across shift the, at all. <laughs> their color is pretty nice. It, it seems, look at that. That's 12,800. Yeah. Let's compare that to 400. That color. Same color. Yeah, that's Look at nice. her face. I mean, you don't see a, a yellow or a red start to creep in, creep in. Yeah. So that's pretty cool. I mean, that kind of color packed into a small body. But, of course, Fuji, you know, Fuji's always pretty pretty good the on that side of things. The colors are very good. Yeah. But it just, it gives me, with this camera, I feel more than confident going to, to 1600 yeah, ISO yeah. and shooting it in, you know, in situations where I needed to make a yeah. decent print and nice, you know, 3200 is on the edge, 64 is definitely off the cliff, but, so that, I think though, 400, 200, 400, pretty everyday usage kind of uh, setting, mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. getting a 16 to 32 if you need to, mm -hmm. but uh, try to keep it at 16, I think is a good place for this camera to be. Yeah. Right, that was more impressive than I thought it would be. Now we're going to do our autofocus test. And this is a 35 millimeter equivalent lens, so it's a little bit wider. You're not going to have quite as much separation from the background, and the and autofocus might here. have a little bit of an easier time, honestly. And so let's get to it. So let's look at the autofocus test. This one always stresses me out a little bit because I want the cameras to perform at their optimal best. And yeah. sometimes, you know, it's like so many settings to turn on and off. But anyway, so here we have her walking towards us. Uh, she's we, do, we do have eye detect and all that on. It's all it's set on. to continuous focus. Yep. We did our best. <laughs> we did. And I mean, she's focused as she, she walks towards it us. It is in focus, yeah. Yeah? I remember when I was shooting it, I felt like, felt like the, it was points, the points were staying on her the whole time. It wasn't jumping around anywhere else like sometimes these cameras do. Now, we did not have this on its highest frame rate. We didn't have it at like 11 frames a second. Yeah, I actually love that about this camera is that you can choose exactly how many frames per second you want with all the settings, which is, I've never seen that before. It's yeah, awesome. we were doing this at five frames a second. Yeah, yeah. I did also do a couple things where I would stand right in front of her and I would focus it off in the distance and then I'd just hold it up and mash down the shutter button. It was and popping to her it face. It would actually pop to her face mm -hmm. and fire the shutter. It'd take usually just under half a second, but it was quick enough if you're you know, shooting kids or something like that and there's not a ton of movement between you and them it would probably be okay. Yeah. So let's take a look at the presets on this camera. Well, first of all, the standard preset, they label it Provia. So kind of, you know, medium contrast, mm -hmm. run of the mill. The next one down that you're on, that is Velvia. That makes perfect sense, because Velvia, I shot a ton of Velvia back in the day, and it was saturated colors, mm -hmm. man. And, and, and this is very is yellow. Ruddy, yeah. And, yeah. <laughs> All right. And then you go to the next one, and that is Astia, which is Interesting. also called Soft. The next one is Classic Chrome. Boy, a little more muted in the colors, mm -hmm. still have a little more contrast, a little heavier in the blacks. Uh, then the next one is the Pro Negative, uh, which is very similar. There's more color in the Pro Negative. There is more color. You see the warmth in her face, you see it in her face, in, in the shirt, but yeah. you see the yellow but in her still face. Very I should say yellow, the more warmth in yeah. her face. Oh, so this is Pro Negative High. I think it means high contrast. Um, Ah, it's interesting. You know, if you're trying to get something to look a little more washed out, mm -hmm. you know, I could see where you could apply it. Yeah. Whoa, heavy contrast, heavy yeah. color. That's classic negative. They say hard, enhanced color with hard tonality. Very hard. This is Eterna Cinema Film. Yeah, Eterna is an archival film for cinema. That's a really funny profile to put in here. That is, it is interesting. Super flat. The color looks, it, it has more color than the other low con profiles did, but it's super low con. Now we go to just a bleach black and yeah, white. Yeah, then here. we have Acros. Acros, yeah, that's Which, nice. That, that looks just like Acros, actually. It has a nice kind of blue color to the, uh, to the highlights. Mm -hmm. And then monochrome, just kind of standard. And then, of course, the sepia, which is everyone's favorite profile. Absolutely. Can't go without a sepia <laughs> file, profile. So I, I feel like the first handful of these film emulations are pretty interesting, and I like the Acros a lot. This is fun, just fun. I mean, you can get a lot of these looks in kind of post-processing, you know, uh, plugins that yeah. you get later, but, but it's fun, something fun to play with. 
Next, we're gonna take a look at the 4K video capabilities of this little camera, and then after that, we're gonna to go to just straight HD at 120 frames a second. I'm gonna see your hair fly around. So here's a look at the video on the X100V. Yeah, I think the color is very pretty. Yeah, this reminds uh, me a lot of the 5D actually, which it does. I always thought had nice color. Yeah, this is very pretty color. The, the it's nice contrast. This is just straight out of the, you know, we haven't done yeah. anything to this at all. Standard profile. Yeah. I like it has a perfect amount of like crisp contrast and, and sharpness to it, but it doesn't look overly sharp, overly contrasty, overly crisp. It really is just kind of exactly how I would want it to be. This is really just <coughs> for kind of shooting around. It's it's not for pro video or anything like that. It's for shooting around when you when you need to capture, you know, your kids or the sunset or whatever you're shooting when you're when you're using the camera. All right, I think the slow motion is hilarious. And uh, it doesn't look too compressed or anything. No, you know? it does not. You're a little noise, a little bit of something in your jacket, but. Overall, it's a nice. You see the nice hairs that starts to move. I'm not really seeing any kind of bit mapping around the hair, or yeah, it's not breaking up. Could you imagine getting footage like this four or five years ago? No, from, there's no way. Yeah, there's no way. Oh, how this is now how from a come. from a camera that is reasonably prized. This is it's this a, is it's a, it's essentially a luxury point and shoot. <laughs> yeah, this is, <laughs> it's become everyone gets 4K. Uh, you know, yeah. everyone gets 1080 at 120 frames. Yep. You know, it's just amazing. Alrighty, well, uh, ergonomics, what do we think? Alright, talk about ergonomics. Well, it's exactly what I expected it to be on so many levels. That is a small, compact, uh, just in your pocket kind of camera. I did like the fact that this was easy to get a hold of here. Yeah, it's not too I, bad. It's not it's too not bad. Flat, flat. But I didn't like this. I moved this button right here uh -huh. several times when I grabbed a hold of it. Yeah. So I would grab a hold of it and I was changing my. Uh, uh, or the one on the back. Uh, the one on the back gets me. Yeah, I, so it's like those two dials being where you grip the camera, I felt were a little bit of a yeah. problem. Yeah, I totally. moved them a couple of times. Um, there are a couple updates mm -hmm. to this compared to some of the older bodies. They removed the D-pad. And I have conflicting feelings about it because I actually liked having those buttons there mm. um, and being able to program them. I miss having some buttons on this body, but on the other hand, you don't have to worry about pushing the buttons when you grab the camera. It's nice having the real estate, so I don't know. Yeah. I don't know what to say there. One of the things I've always loved about this camera is the, the optical viewfinder. I really like that. I like the way they use frame lines, and I like the little window that you can use to make sure you're spot on focus, even if you are using the optical viewfinder. So. Um, there are just, for me, there are a lot of things to like about this camera. I think it's a great travel camera. Well, I think that because the all of the dials are pretty much you've got you the aperture on the lens, you've got your shutter up here, you got your sh your ISO. I mean, it's just so easy to be able to set this up. It's very much a manual tactile experience. But then when you get into the the menus, it's, it's a, little messy. a little bit difficult in the menus. I don't think that's as easy and as intuitive. But uh, but fortunately, you have enough tactile experience going on up here that once you get set, this is just kind of a pull out, shoot, put it away kind of yeah. camera. And I think yeah. in that way, it, it's successful. So pretty amazing 4K video as well. And for a small camera and that kind of form factor to be on uh, vacation, to be on location, to catch some 4K video, I think is a really nice application. Yeah, exactly. If this is your just everyday carry, that's what it really is. Uh, this is a really nice everyday carry camera that you stick in your backpack, that you have on hand with you all the time because it takes good quality photos, very lightweight, not super expensive, so if something happens to it, it's not the worst, you know, it's not like losing your Nikon D850 or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> um, and it does 4K video, which is awesome. Yeah. And incredible. it has pretty, pretty capable autofocus. I mean, it's not perfect, but it seemed okay, so yeah, it's a good option. Fuji makes great cameras, they really do, with excellent color yeah. science, and uh, we've always liked them here at the Slendon Lens. Yeah. I should say Kenneth especially likes them here. I especially like them. Sign lens, so. <laughs> well, give us some comments. Let us know what you're thinking about the new Fuji X100V. Um, also, if you have other cameras you'd like to see or hear us talk about, uh, put them in the comments below. A shout out to Sammy's Camera, who sponsors us here at the Sign Lens. Great partner for us because they're going to help us bring all the cameras that we can possibly get a hold of uh, to you as quick as possible. So we really appreciate everyone Sammy's. I've been working with Sammy's. They're great. For a long time long time. I have purchased things from them from the beginning, so it's been 35 years I've bought stuff from Sammy's, so I've seen them grow from just a tiny little place to a really uh, powerhouse uh, camera store. So, 
All right, so leave some comments. Make sure you follow us here at Slide of Lambs and keep those cameras rolling. And keep on clicking.